Hello there guys, my name is Nabbit HD, and welcome to my top 5 of E3. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, then Tom, Loz and I did a coffee morning talking about all the games that came out at E3 and some of what we thought were like the best moments of the Bethesda conference and things like that. But this um, video is just going to be about all of my personal best moments from E3. So I hope you're going to be a little bit surprised. And I've tried to stay away from the things that Tom Git did, so you're not going to see the same games in this video at all, I promise. Um, but yeah. I really hope you have a good time and think about picking up some of these games because they all look really, really good and I think you'll enjoy them. So yeah, let's get right into it. Number five, Shenmue 3. Shenmue is a famous game that was released for the Dreamcast in 1999 and it was closely followed by a sequel, Shenmue 2. However, there were meant to be four games in the series and the second two were never released until now. The creator of the game put um, it up on Kickstarter to see if there was any interest in the sequel finally coming out after all these years, and it had a target of $2 million. It reached it in 9 hours. There was a presentation for the game at E3, I think it's currently sitting at like 3 million actually now, the actual Kickstarter, um, but it was really an incredible moment to realise that this game was going to come back after all of these years. Um, the original story of the game is about a guy who's trying to seek vengeance for his father's murder by um, a Chinese guy. And so um, it starts off in Japan where the guy was murdered and now he's kind of made this journey to um, Hong Kong and that's where the story is going to continue and it's going to be, actually be like the true continuation of the game and I think this is definitely worth like looking out for. Uh, it tended to be quite open world uh, the weather changed in accordance with actual weather like in real time in a certain place in Japan which was really really unheard of at the time Shenmue was actually the most expensive game really? ever developed so uh, I am okay. really really excited to see uh, what's going to happen in the third game in the series and the characters are quite easy to connect with and it's just an incredible game, so that's why it made number five on my list. And now I think it's time to talk about game number four. Number four! Mario and Luigi Paper Jam! Mario and Luigi's Paper Jam is the child of two of my favourite handheld RPG series of all time, and both of them are Mario series. And so this is going to be a collaboration kind of between the team that makes Mario and Luigi games uh, which are known for having like really really great dialogue and story but also some really fun turn-based combat and some good field puzzles as well um, but collaborating with Paper Mario which is known to be a great puzzle game another really really good RPG um, with some really, really interesting puzzles where, which involve the fact that Paper Mario is flat and being able to squeeze through tight spaces and things like that. And everything that I've seen so far indicates that this game is going to be completely worthy of being a member of both of these two franchises. It looks really, really fun and really good. Uh, the turn-based combat appears to come back and again it seems to be interactive, uh, which is something that's always fun. Like, you get situations like this, which look similar to the combat, uh, where um, if Mario's jumping on an enemy's head, then if you press A at the right time, then you get extra damage. So it's not just a case of clicking what attack you want to do. There's much more to it than that. Um, but this looks like it's going to be a combination between that and Paper Mario, which is just another one of my favourite games. So I'm really excited for this, and I think now it's time to talk about game number three. Number three, Ratchet and Clank! So, if you didn't already know, I'm a massive fan of the Ratchet and Clank series. They are some great 3D platformers slash kind of third-person shooters. They're really fun to play. They always go over top on the weapons. The humor's really, really fun. And I just love these games, so I'm really pleased to see that they're going to reimagine uh, Ratchet and Clank's origin story um, by kind of making an entirely new game. There was already a Ratchet and Clank one for like the PlayStation 2 which kind of explained where they came from but what they've done is they've decided to retell the story in a new way with new levels, new weapons, new everything and it's going to kind of have a crossover movie with it as well that's going to be in cinema next year and 
I'm just really excited to see both of these things and so this was like a big thing for me at E3 to look out for. It looks amazing. Uh, some of the developers were saying that they were sending around screenshots of the game and people were asking, hey, is this like a pre-rendered shot? And they're having to say, no, this is just a screenshot from the right game that we just took ourselves. Which I think is absolutely incredible to be able to say, hey, this is just gameplay footage and it looks like something that would be in an actual movie. That is something that's absolutely incredible that they've managed to do, and it just looks really good. There's lots of little nods to things in the series, like Megacorp, you can see billboards from them in the background and so on, which is the weapons company who you buy weapons off in Ratchet and Clank 2, uh, on the PlayStation 2, not Ratchet and Clank 1, you buy them off Gadgetron in this game. Um, but it's just like little things like that that you just see in the background, and you just think, ha, they're making little nods to like the rest of the games in the series. Um, and it just looks like a real return to form, and I'm really happy to see it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this game and I think you should be too. So now I think it's time to talk about game number two on my list. Number two! Black Ops 3! Okay, any of you who have subscribed to my channel at any point will know that I am a massive Call of Duty fan and that my favourite developer of the Call of Duty games is Treyarch and this year it is their turn. So this is the same company that made World at War, Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2, which I would say are arguably three of the best games in the series, perhaps only surpassed by Modern Warfare 1, the original, just a little bit. I didn't really like Modern Warfare 2 that much. Like, in my opinion, Black Ops 2 was probably the best game in the Call of Duty series so far, which is why I am really, really hyped to see Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3 is apparently going to have a new Zombies mode, but more exciting than that, in my opinion, is the multiplayer in this game, which looks really smooth. It's going to be built off of the Black Ops 2 engine. And just look at some of these clips that they're putting out here. It just looks like a really fun game. Uh, it looks like they've borrowed a little bit from the Advanced Warfare gameplay with kind of augmented jumps a little bit. But it doesn't look like it's going to be as kind of jerky as that. You're still going to be able to keep target on people because it looks to be like a lot of a smoother kind of transition if someone does kind of a big jump like that. Um, but more than that, it looks like the maps are going to be really fun, the wall running concept looks really interesting and the story is something that I am actually interested in this year because um, the continuation from like the last two uh, seemed quite intriguing and I want to see how they're going to follow it up. So yeah, all in all, I'm really really looking forward to this game. I might even start doing some Call of Duty gameplays again because obviously you guys know I haven't really done that much on Advanced Warfare or Ghosts. But Black Ops 2 was the last game where I was really, really into making gameplays. Uh, I'm going to put like a link to the montage that I did on the screen here. This was probably like my favourite video that I ever made. And I'm hoping to do some similar stuff with this game. Really looking forward to it. Hope you guys are too. You can kind of hear the passion coming through now. Which means that the next game on my list is going to be even better. So now we're going to move on to the top spot on my list. Get ready for game number one. Yashi's Willy World. Okay, so the best way to kind of explain why this is above Call of Duty on my list is just to show you footage. This game looks amazing. It's a new Yoshi title. Uh, the first Yoshi title ever released was Super Mario World 2 and it seems to be in a similar kind of vein with kind of like a childish kind of charm to it and if you look at the game you can see that there's kind of an atmosphere to it that just seems pretty cool. But what they've done with this one is that they've made everything full of wool. Like everything is made of wool in the game and like they've got some cool mechanics based around that. Like you can see that like because all the enemies are made of wool, when Yoshi eats them he kind of unravels them and turns them into these little kind of balls of wool which you can then throw at other enemies. But also you can like unravel um, parts of the scenery to reveal like secret areas and you can throw these wool balls to kind of new areas of scenery and like make platforms so that you can get up places. Um, but also more than that, uh, when you throw uh, like balls of wool at things like piranha plants then it kind of ravels them in and it just kind of works so smoothly with like this woolly idea that you're kind of left wondering why the Yoshi games haven't all been made this way and it's also quite reminiscent of Kirby's Epic Yarn which is a game made for the Wii uh, which kind of had a similar kind of feel to it with like everything having kind of a stitched feel instead of like a knitted feel um, and I, I just liked all of the concepts in this game it's got a really nice feel the platforming seems to be really fun um, there's some co-op in it as you can see here like there's two Yoshis running around all the time um, and 
I'm just really, really pleased with this game. I can't say I'm looking forward to it now because it's actually out now. Uh, it was released a couple of days after E3, um, so it's in shops now if you want to buy it, but you would need a Wii U, which I think is probably the downside, is the fact that it's made by Nintendo and not many people have a Wii U, so I feel like a lot of people are going to miss out on this amazing game. Um, but yeah, if you have a look, um, I'm probably going to do a playthrough of like the original Super Mario World 2 so that you can kind of get a feel for the Yoshi games, um, but I'm really, really glad with this game and I'm considering buying a Wii U just to get it. I can give it no higher compliment than that and I think that this has just been an amazing E3 overall. And that concludes my top five, guys. So I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, I've been Nabbit HD. Go and watch Tom's video about his top five. Go and watch our coffee morning where we talk a little bit more about E3. And look out because I'm going to be bringing out some more content to Tom's channel very, very soon. So thanks for watching, guys. I've been Nabbit HD, and I will see you later. Remember to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe.